Hi, Hi, I'm Sophia Foyer, and I'm here with... Broden. And this is our UFC 307 predictions. Now, the first fight on the early prelims is Court McGee versus Tim Means. Now, we have a Brazilian jiu-jitsu person versus a striker. That being, Court McGee is the jiu-jitsu person, and Tim Means is a striker. We both The records are for Court is 22 and 13, and Tim Means is 33 and 16. Now, Broden, what do you think? Who do you think is going to win this? Personally, I think Court McGee is going to win this fight. Um, coming in as a veteran, Tim Means on a pretty bad losing streak. Um, doesn't do well when he gets taken down. I think Court McGee is going to have a. I think he, I think he's going to probably win a decision. Honestly, I completely agree with you. I think Tim Means he doesn't do a little too well under pressure. I think Court McGee does just fine being under that pressure, being with the UFC for a while. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to switch to our next fight. We got a women's strawweight fight. This is Carla Esperanza versus Tisha Pennington. And we got a wrestler, kind of, and striker versus mainly a striker. Now, Tisha is coming back from a pregnancy, and her wife is actually fighting on the co main event, Raquel Pennington. It's amazing. So, what do you think Defending about this fight? Too. Yeah, that is also true. Um, I think Carla Esparza is <sighs> very bad. boring. Bad. Yeah, very boring, in my personal opinion. Um, but I could definitely see her uh, grounding it to a yeah. unanimous decision. Um, I haven't seen too much of Tanisha Pennington's fight, so I don't know for sure uh, what she's going to bring. But um, I think I think Esparza, just, I think she's going to do what she normally does, just to take down and just ground control the whole fight, most of it. Yeah, we have seen that in the previous fight between Carla Esparza versus Rose. But in my opinion, I hope Tisha wins because I'm not a big fan of Carla. Sorry, you guys can argue with me on that one. But if you watch her past fights, you can obviously see why I have that opinion. Carla likes to sit on the ground with the person on the back or on mount. Doesn't really do much. So I completely agree with you with the unanimous decision. But I'm going with Tisha on this one. But our next fight is Ryan Spann versus Ovince St. Pro. At light heavyweight. It's a good one. It's a good one. Um, for this fight, I think, honestly, hmm, Avinci St. Prop hasn't fought since the beginning of this year. Right. Coming off a couple few bad. He's had a lot of delayed fights uh, the past, like, two or three years. Ryan Spann coming off of two, three losses. Um, it's going to be a difficult one. It's going to be a difficult one. But I could definitely see Spann catching him with a shot tonight. I think he's favored. He's favored right. in the fight. So, I mean... There's definitely a big chance um, of him landing a big shot, but I mean St. Prowse could also land a big shot. With right. That, so, I completely agree. Now, what Broden was talking about is the odds, is the betting odds. Now, if we look at the betting odds, Ryan Spann is negative 245, and Ovince is plus 200. For the people that don't know about that, you want the negative number. You don't want the plus number. Ryan Spann, looking back and going into the research about him, he has actually knocked out a couple people that have names. For instance, Dominic Reyes. And Ovense, obviously, I agree with Broden 100%. You know, it's going to be tough, especially at this division. It's really hard. It got a lot of power. Not as much as the heavyweights, but obviously you got some fluidness and you got some power, some striking and some jiu-jitsu. But I'm going to say Ovense just because he has more striking power. Ryan Spann hasn't won a fight in a while, so mm-hmm, hopefully mm-hmm. there's improvements, but Keeps his I don't chin know. out there. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a good fight. Now, we're going to switch to the main prelims. And the first fight is Cesar Almeida versus Ihor Potera, and this is middleweight. Cesar is a kickboxer, and Ihor is jiu-jitsu, but he's a striker too. Now, if you don't know Cesar Almeida, this is actually a fun fact, he was in glory kickboxing, and he fought Alex Pereira and actually knocked him out in the third round. Very, very good fight. Yes. I'm actually very excited for this one. Caesar, I'm going to go with Caesar on this uh, fight personally. Coming in as a good veteran, uh, plenty of time in glory, just amazing. I know he spent some time in Thailand. Yeah. Um, Ihor, I mean... I just think I think it's going to be on the feet, most of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if he takes him down, hopefully uh, Caesar's jiu-jitsu will help with that. But um, I really think I think, I think we're going to see a knockout. Round I second, agree. Second, third round here. 
I agree with that. Now, speaking of, if we have, we have the stats up right now, and if we look at the striking accuracy, Caesar has a 72% accuracy, and Eohor has only a 55% accuracy. Now, some of you are like, well, Caesar only has a 5-1 and one record, but Eohor has a 20-6 and six record. It doesn't matter at this point. Fighting has changed so much to the point where records don't, they can mean a lot or they can either not. Mm -hmm. So it's all about that skill level. But now that we say that, our next fight is Austin Hubbard versus Alex Hernandez at lightweight. Now for some of the people, this might be a familiar fighter, Austin Hubbard. He was on Tough, the Ultimate Fighter season 31. And he was on the season where Connor versus Michael Chandler. It was on Chandler's team. Mm -hmm. He's more of a striker, but I think he can handle himself on the ground. It's just, can you get over that pressure? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hernandez, very good on the feet. Um, when he gets you down, he's very, very locked in. He's very intuitive. I think I think it's going to be a good fight. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Hernandez probably. Mm, Hubbard keeps his chin open, possibly, possibly knockout, or if he gets him down, possibly a submission. I agree. I mean, I guess it could go either way. I feel like Alex Hernandez, too, just because he's had more recent fights, and that's striking power. I think he has a lot more knockout power than Austin Hubbard. So I'm going to also say Alex Hernandez, but I'm going to call it third round knockout. So I'm going to say second round submission. Yeah, there we go. We're getting some... Good fight results now. Mm -hmm. Now, I love talking about women's MMA because I actually do train in this sport. I compete in jiu-jitsu, and I do MMA. And Broda and I mm -hmm. hear that you train too. Mm -hmm. I'm an amateur boxer. Just had to throw that in there for you guys. They're like, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We know what we're doing. Trust. Trust. So this next fight is actually a women's strawweight. Marina Rodriguez versus Ismael Luciendo. Now, we have a Brazilian jiu-jitsu person. And we have a striker. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Brazilian is obviously the jiu-jitsu person. No, she's not. It's <laughs> Marina Rodriguez, she is. Isman is actually the striker. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, well, well you don't know these girls. Why would we li watch this? Women are coming back, man, I'm telling you. We got awesome fights, but Whoa, I'm calling... Man. Isman Luciendo, just because her striking ability, if you watch her fights, you can see she can hold herself against these girls. And especially, she's reminding me more of a Jessica Andrade, just mm -hmm. because of that power and a holding herself, you know what I mean? I definitely agree with that. I see a lot of Jessica Andrade there. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm completely on board. I think Luciendo's going to win this fight by knockout, second, third round. I completely agree. Possibly first. Now, we're going to switch to our next fight, one of the, la the last fight of the prelims. Now, when you look at this fight, you're like, why is he? Why are these fighters on the prelims? I get exactly. it. Exactly. I get it. But this is our welterweight fight before the main card, and it is actually Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson versus our boy Joaquin Buckley. Amazing, amazing talent. Oh yeah, this is going to be a good striking fight. We got a karate-based fighter versus amazing, amazing wrestler. 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 South Paul versus Orthodox. It's going to be yep. very difficult on feet. Um, honestly, I could see a lot of people going for Wonder Boy here, but I'm going to go with John Queen Buckley by a uh, unanimous decision. I feel that. For me, I'm kind of torn up because I love Stephen Thompson. I love that man. Gotta love Stephen Thompson. But, I mean, if we look back into the previous fights, as we both watch fights and we both train, mm -hmm. from our point of view, for someone that trains, obviously you can see the kick power. But Joaquin Buckley having that knockout in 2020 of the spinning head kick, the spinning mm -hmm. side kick, you know, you can have your opinions, but, I mean, either way, I would be happy in this fight, but predominantly, I want Stephen Boy Wonder, Wonder Boy Thompson to win this fight by unanimous decision, mm -hmm. just because I feel like this could be a good war mm -hmm. going the distance. Also got to find out, does, does Thompson still have it? You know what yeah, I'm saying? could this be his last fight? in the sport for years and years and years been a title contender for most of his career. Right. And he has fight. fought Tyrone Woodley for the title. Mm -hmm. So Maybe does he fight. have that in him still? Does he want to end his career? Who knows? But now is the exciting part. We're going to get started with the main event. This fight now is in women's fight. This is women's, women's bantamweight. Ketlin Vera versus Kayla Harrison. 
Now, a lot of people know Kayla Harrison from the PFL. Kayla is a judo fighter, and Kenlin Vera is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Now, people are like, what is the difference? What's the difference? For the people that don't know the difference, judo, obviously, as we know, is a lot of throws. Brazilian jiu-jitsu does consist of throws, but it's more of takedowns and mm-hmm. submissions. So, Kayla is looking for her title shot, man. She thinks she wants that title shot. She wants to call out Amanda Nunes. Mm-hmm. Girl, let's be realistic. Amanda was a two-time champion. You cannot do that. Amanda put it down. <laughs> you might have been champion PFL, but you were in there with some little women. I'm, so- I'm sorry. I got to say it. But I'm picking Kayla just because I think her striking has improved so much, especially being with American Top Team with the women there, and especially like fighters like Dustin Poirier mm-hmm. and Andre Arlovsky. You know, you got fighters that Amazing have been in this game for so long. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Broden? I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Kayla. Um, I think her southpaw stance is going to be just too much. 74.7% uh, striking percentage. It's insane. insane number. I don't um, think Caitlin really has a chance in this, in this one, guys. I'm going to go first round knockout. Well, our next fight. This is actually really funny to me, which people are like, you should have known this. This next fight is Kevin Holland versus Roman Dalziti. The what? however you say it but when you look up the statistics of kevin holland i think this is really funny i didn't know this is i was looking up the research for this video and for the show is kevin holland is a kung fu fighter yeah very interesting very Very interesting interesting. i did not know that but we got kung fu versus a straight freestyle mma fighter kevin holland is known for his fights in 2020 Mm -hmm. and for the people that he fought and especially being one of those fighters that that just answers the phone and says yes i'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. and obviously we all want to be that person just goes yeah i'm gonna fight i'm gonna fight kevin holland has some jujitsu in him and we know that but um his last fight versus michael venom page was not the one to watch to be honest it was very boring it was a very much of a joke been on a very for someone rocky, that watches fights. It's been on a very rocky strain. Yeah. So hof- hopefully we can see improvements from Kevin Holland, but also from Roman, because looking at Roman's record, it's not doing too well, and from the people that he fought. But I'm picking Kevin Holland in the second round knockout mm-hmm. or submission. Mm-hmm. So. I think I agree with you. I think I'm going to go Kevin Holland by submission. Yeah. Now, the third fight on this card We got a Hall of Famer on this card, and it's looking to be his last fight. Josie Aldo versus Mario Bautista at Bantamweight. This is a very intriguing fight, as people are fans of Josie Aldo. We all know that his striking is incredible. His power is famous. Amazing striking. Um, Absolute legend. Yes. Of the sport. I I feel like his legacy gets tarnished a lot because of that McGregor loss. But, um... Ruled the division for years, undefeated. Amazing fighter. Yeah. Um, but does he still have it? You know, he's right. coming into this fight, 38 years old. It's going to be a tough one. I really don't know um, how he's, how he's going to suit it, but uh, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, we're bi- both picking Jose Aldo, either by unanimous decision or knockout. Now our next fight, the co-main event, Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena, guys. Juliana's looking for that title. Does she deserve it? Does she not? Does Raquel keep it? Can she handle the power? I'm picking Juliana in my favor. Mm -hmm. I'm calling unanimous decision by Juliana. I think that's a really good bet. Um, I'm going to go also unanimous decision by Juliana Pena. Um, I just think think she's going to wrestle her all night. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she's going to regain her title back. Now, for the fight that you guys have all been waiting for. The main event of the night. Light heavyweight, Alex Pereira versus Khalil Rowtree Jr. It's going to be an amazing fight. This is going to be an amazing striking fight because it, hearing the interviews and listening to Khalil talk, you hear that and you find out he's never shot a takedown on someone. Not once. And he's not once in his career. But Alex Pereira has jiu-jitsu, but he has striking. He was in glory kickboxing, but... I know we both have our differences on this fight, but I'm picking Alex Pereira by knockout in the third round, guys. I am that. I mean, I, th- I think I think Pereira is going to win it. Um, how many how many fights has Pereira had in the in the UFC? Less than ten. Right. And he's already in goat conversations. Right. Um, 
I think it'd be amazing. I'd love to see him move up to heavyweight and go for a third belt. I think that'd be an amazing fight. Right. Um, either against an Aspinall or a Jones, if right. Jones stays. Um, um, for the record, I'm just going to say John Jones would kill Alex Pereira. For the rumors that are being said, so I mean, if we look at the striking, John Jones is the goat. I think it. I think it'd be iffy. It'd on be the ground. tough. It'd be tough I on the once ground. Once he gets him down, it'd be bad. But uh, as much as I believe uh, Alex Pereira will win this fight, I'm gonna go with uh, Roundtree. Um, I think if he can land an amazing, I th- you see Pereira, he's really susceptible to to overhands. Yes, he saw is. that many times with Izzy. Rocked him in the first round, of the first fight. Right. Knocked him out with one in the second fight. Yes. Um, but Izzy did come back. That's all I gotta say. Izzy did come back. I'm would, gonna say that. Yeah, that was that was a good fight. I'd yeah. love to see Roundtree land an overhand to uh, to yeah. Alex and gain the title because he he deserves it more than anybody. Right. Now a lot of people are gonna think otherwise, but that was our UFC 307 predictions. Please tune in Saturday to watch the fights, and we'll be back soon. Thank you.